The Aldo Moro flyway that ruthlessly cuts across the port area of Genoa was once seen as a very misguided decision by the city's road planners. Since August 2018, however, only a few kilometres west from here, it became more than just a mere eyesore, when part of the connecting overhead highway suddenly collapsed, killing over 40 people. World-renowned architect Renzo Piano, who was born close to Genoa City, has offered to redesign Morandi Bridge in tribute to those who died. He has already transformed the rundown port area of the city into a vibrant, family-friendly destination. It now includes the largest aquarium in Europe, apparently with some hefty ticket prices to match. This futuristic crane, with its panoramic lift that looks and moves a lot like the plunger inside a cafetiere, and this charming biosphere, with its beautiful array of tropical flowers and birds. There is also this rather weird sculpture that looks like a collection of the body parts Terry Gilliam used in his Monty Python animations, and this full-size replica of a pirate ship now moored here permanently after being built and used as a film set for the 1986 Roman Polanski movie, Pirates. No, I've never heard of it either. The birthplace of Christopher Columbus has been disputed for decades, with some theories now suggesting he came from Portugal. But until this is categorically proved, Genoa will continue to claim the explorer as its most famous son. Yet the Janie's house in which it is claimed Columbus was born and lived his early life in appears to suggest he may have been English, going by the flags flying outside of it. There are in fact St George's flags all over the city, but this has nothing to do with a desire to be English, far from it. The English St George's flag actually originates from Genoa and was first adopted by the English fleet in the 12th century to warn potential sea-bound enemies in the Mediterranean that it was under the protection of the then mighty fleet of Genoa. Thanks to the surrounding Alps and Apennines, the region of Liguria in which Genoa is its capital is primarily mountainous and as a result, there is little of Genoa that is flat. The Seca Rigi Funicula, whose signs may mislead some into believing there are toilet facilities on board, there aren't, has been travelling up and down the hill of Rigi since 1895. It transports passengers from the bustling city centre into the surrounding Mura National Park in less than 15 minutes, along a distance of nearly one and a half kilometres with a gradient of between 20 and 35%. The protected park area covers over 600 hectares of land, offering some stunning hilly walks and the chance to see what's left of the old city walls and ancient forts. Running since 1891, the Santana Funicula is the oldest in Genoa. The cars are smaller and slower, the distance covered is not as great, the gradient is not as steep, and the altitude it reaches is no more than 75 metres above sea level. Yet all this adds to its charm, even if the views over the city from the top station at Batani are, well, hardly any. But come out of the station and cross the busy road to another form of Janey's public transport. The Ancensori Magenta Crocco is reached via a rather long pedestrian tunnel, disappointingly not painted magenta, and yes, at the end of it, it is just a lift or elevator, which takes less than a minute to bring passengers up to Crocco, where there are tantalisingly better views to be seen between the tower blocks. The Ancensore Castelletto Lavente not only promises its passengers panoramic views of the city, but also offers some beautiful original Art Nouveau interiors to enjoy along the way. 57 metres up at the top station, 
further architectural details can be marvelled, both inside and out, as well as comparing the structure to Lisbon's Elevador Santo Justa, before taking in that fantastic panorama. The inside of the actual lift carriages themselves, however, is nothing to write home about. So what happens if one combines a lift with a funicular, I hear you cry? Well, wonder no more, as the result is the unique Ascensore Castello di Albertis Monte Galletto. From the ground station at Via Balbi, this small carriage has been saving passengers from walking the 235 metre long tunnel to the lift shafts at the end of it since 2004 although the lift shafts themselves have been in operation here since 1929. The automatic carriage slowly glides into the shaft as its partner carriage does the complete opposite and works its way back to Balbi. Once safely inside, this carriage whizzes 72 metres up vertically to the station of Corso do Galli, where I was far too excited by the whole experience to step out and have a look around. Like many great cathedrals in Europe, Genoa's Cattedrale di San Lorenzo is still not complete, awaiting its second 16th century bell tower to be started, let alone finished. Its black and white zebra striped appearance that carries on inside as well leaves many divided as to whether they actually like it or not. In contrast, the two stone lions that guard the main entrance appear baffled by their popularity amongst visitors of all ages. Elsewhere, there are the remains of this Roman-esque convent with well, and over the top of this well is Janus, the Roman god of beginnings and owner of two faces, who is said to have founded the city itself. The 17th and 18th century saw Ligurias rich and powerful showing off their wealth in the construction of Janey's palaces, with the mighty Palazzo Reale offering the greatest splendour of them all. The then ruling Savoys lavished their palace with the finest of artwork and furniture, and even created their own if not smaller scale version of Versailles glittering hall of mirrors. But it wasn't just the living that enjoyed grandeur in Genoa. Believed to be one of the largest, if not most beautiful, cemeteries in Europe, the Cimitero Monumentale di Staglieno is more like a huge art gallery than a cemetery. Here, Genoa's 19th century rich and famous mark the final resting places of their dead with these stunning life-size sculptures. One in particular was immortalised by French photographer Bernard Pierre Wolfe, whose image was used by British rock band Joy Division as the front cover to their critically acclaimed album Closer. Although not originally from the album, their biggest hit and one of the most seminal tracks of the 1980s was Love Will Tear Us Apart. When the single was first released in 1980, the sleeve cover to the 12 inch featured this sculpted tomb found further inside the cemetery. Not all could fit nor afford to rest in peace under the shelter of the porticos, and so more modest graves and headstones fill the square kilometre that the cemetery covers. For example, just beyond the foundations of the aqueduct that crosses through the grounds of the cemetery is the small and unassuming grave of Constance Lloyd, the wife of Oscar Wilde. 